I've been using the iPad Pro seriously for well over three years now. For the last three months, however, I've been using an Android tablet where I'd normally use my iPad Pro. Specifically, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And in today's video, I'd like to share with you my experiences, what I liked, what I didn't like, what worked, what didn't work. This video is specifically not a comparison between the M1 iPad Pro and the S8 Ultra. I'm still using the pre-M1 2020 iPad Pro, and there are already so many great head-to-head -head comparison videos, I don't think we need another one. Instead, this video is about how the whole Android S8 Ultra package compares to the whole iPad Pro setup. I want to look at four particular use case areas, media consumption, general productivity work, photo and graphics, and coding. Timestamps are in the description. Let's jump straight into media consumption. I watch a lot of media on my tablet. In fact, I prefer it to watching on the TV. So I've managed to test the SA a lot as a media device. The SA Ultra has a beautiful 14 inch AMOLED panel, which delivers the rich contrast you'd expect from a panel of that kind. I was able to compare it side by side with my wife's fully specced out 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. And although I think I prefer the Liquid Retina XDR screen on the iPad, they are both excellent. And this will definitely be down to personal preference. Same too with the speakers. I'm not an audiophile, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. I really like the sound from the S8. A quick browse around the internet will tell you that plenty of people prefer the S8 over the iPad Pro, and plenty of people lean the other way. There's no clear winner. Both are really good. It will just be personal preference. Where I think the S8 is a clear winner is with the form factor. The 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the S8 yields thinner black bars when watching a movie. Contrast this with the 4x3 ratio of the iPad Pro, where the black bars are pretty thick and pretty noticeable. The kickstand that comes with the advanced book cover keyboard means you can get your viewing angle just right, regardless of where you're watching your media. I really like the kickstand, and the S8 has become my favorite device for watching YouTube and watching movies. The downside of the 16x10 aspect ratio is that it feels pretty unnatural in portrait mode. The 4x3 ratio is much closer to the regular paper and book sizes that you'll encounter in daily life. So it's not really a surprise that 4x3 feels more natural in portrait mode. A related issue with the S8 is the super thin bezels, which look great, but are not entirely functional. When holding the unit, perhaps when reading a book, it's all too easy to trigger the UI with your palms or fingers. And because of the portrait aspect ratio and bezels, I still prefer the iPad Pro for handheld work and for portrait mode usage. Let's move on to talking about general productivity work. I had a lot of success switching my productivity workflows over to Android. All the apps I wanted to hear, more in fact than on the iPad. So I use Firefox and Android has real Firefox, not just some Firefox shell around Safari. I use SyncThing for my file syncing, and that's just not present on iOS at all. I use an open source program called Emacs for a lot of my workflow, and I'm able to run that directly on the S8. Whereas for the iPad, I have to offload my Emacs work either to a server that I keep connected in my home office or to a Raspberry Pi that I carry with me and connect to the iPad's USB-C port. See my video here for more on that if you're interested. Annoyingly though, the quality of the software on Android, even from major vendors, seems much worse than it is on iOS. Two examples that really frustrated me. Disney Plus refused to start when I was on a flight recently. It just sat waiting on the splash screen. I'd downloaded some media before getting on the plane, but it didn't matter. Obviously didn't have Wi-Fi and Disney Plus just wouldn't start. A poor excuse for an offline mode if you ask me. I use 1Password for all my password management and it's available in the Play Store, but it doesn't unlock unless I resize the window, which means that every time I want to use my password manager, I have to start a multitasking session so that I can resize the window. An annoyance that manages to sting me every single day, multiple times a day. Speaking of multitasking, the stock Android multitasking works really well. On the S8, you can have three main windows open with one floating on top, and the windows are freely resizable. On the iPad Pro, it's two windows open with the slide over window as well, and the windows can only be in a 50-50 or a two-thirds, one-third configuration. The S8 also allows you to put windows side by side and top and bottom, whereas the iPad only allows side by side. Thanks again to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, running two windows side by side on the S8 is a pleasant experience. One that is workable, but feels a little cramped in the iPad's four by three ratio. I'd say that the only downside to the Android multitasking experience is that it's not super easy to get your apps 
in there, running in there. On the iPad, anywhere you see an app icon, you can drag it to start or add to a multitasking session. On Android, you can start a multitasking session from the recent app screen or from the edge panel. You can only add a third window from the edge panel and there's no way to drag an icon from the search results or anything like that, which would be a nice addition. The other option for multitasking on the SA is Samsung's DeX, which offers an experience that really is like a standard desktop OS. Windows are freely movable, freely resizable. You get a nice dock, a system tray, desktop icons, the works. It's great, but there is a catch. Not all apps work. For example, 1Password doesn't work in DeX at all. So every time I need to use my password manager, I have to leave DeX and then re-enter, which wouldn't be so bad if DeX didn't take so long to start and stop. Contrast this with Apple's upcoming stage manager, which is pretty limited in window placement, window sizing, and window count, but can run all apps and starts and stops very quickly. I think that DeX is the better execution of multitasking here, but the lack of app support is a killer. And I know that plenty of people are raving over stage manager, and I certainly like the external monitor support, but as a window manager for the iPad itself, it's pretty meh, and DeX makes it look quite childish. Probably my favorite thing about the S8 is the S Pen. I barely use my Apple Pencil. I just find the lack of traction makes note-taking a bit of a pain, whereas the S Pen just feels great straight out of the box. I like doodling on the S8, whereas I just don't even bother with the Apple Pencil. I just don't enjoy using it. The gesture support on the S Pen is a nice touch. Browsing the web using the S Pen, you can navigate back through your history with a gesture, or when watching media, you can adjust the volume or even stop and start the actual media you're watching. Really slick. Moving from my favorite thing to my least favorite thing, the advanced two-in-one book cover keyboard. This is a two-part system with a kickstand that attaches to the back of the tablet and a separate keyboard trackpad unit that attaches via magnets to the bottom edge of the S8. I already talked about the kickstand, I really like it, but the keyboard and trackpad are laughably bad. The trackpad has a real problem with phantom taps, so bad, in fact, that I had to disable tap to click to make it even usable. And the whole thing is so flimsy that using it on your lap is not really feasible. Even if you can balance it just right, when the board flexes, you get phantom key presses and phantom touchpad clicks. It's crazy. I also don't seem to be able to remap the keyboard. I remap caps lock to control on every single one of my machines, but I cannot do it on Android, it seems. I didn't expect this. I really thought I'd be customizing everything on this tablet but I can't even customize something so basic. I even bought an app for keyboard remapping for like two pounds, but it didn't work. I would love a solution to this problem. So if I'm missing something, please do let me know. None of these problems exist on the Magic Keyboard. The trackpad and keyboard are excellent. No phantom clicks, no phantom taps. The unit is rigid, so it sits well on your lap and can even be lifted by the corner, making moving around with it a breeze. And caps lock can be remapped to control as standard in iPad OS. I won't sugarcoat it, the keyboard trackpad combo has really spoiled the whole Android experience for me. It's just so inferior to the Magic Keyboard. I was really surprised to see that the same price in the US. My book cover keyboard came for free as part of a launch offer from Samsung, thankfully. I noticed even that there's been a big price drop in the UK this week, down from something like £300 to around £210. So even Samsung must know this isn't a good unit. And it's a real shame because it really makes the S8 look bad. And otherwise, it's a great unit. Moving on to photo and graphics. On the iPad, I have a great setup. I use an app called Darkroom for raw editing. And then I use Affinity Photo for all my broader image editing workflows, things like creating thumbnails for the channel. On Android, I tried Lightroom for raw editing. And it's fine if a little slow. Like I noticed that some of the adjustments don't have a live edit. You have to wait a second or two to see the effect. This is quite janky and it just isn't present in Darkroom, even when running on my 2020 iPad Pro. And I have the top spec S8 Ultra with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I just got the best I could. So I'm quite surprised to see something so basic taxing the system. I could not find a replacement for Affinity Photo at all. There is Photoshop Express, Snapseed, and a bunch of other photo editors but for broader image workflows like thumbnails, website graphics, video overlays, I found nothing to match up. This is a big gap for me, and I really hope that we'll see something like Affinity or maybe a full Photoshop make it to Android in the future. But for now, I'm still using the iPad for all of my photo and graphics work. Let's talk about coding workflows. Here, Android really shines. I installed Termux, a terminal emulator that gives access to a reasonably complete Linux environment. I got Termux from the F-Droid App Store. 
I really like being able to download apps from the web or from third-party app stores directly onto my tablet without having to jump through loads of hoops. I wish Apple would enable users to opt in to this kind of thing on iOS. Within Termux, I was able to install Emacs, which I used for coding and for a bunch of my productivity work. I got my full Emacs configuration up and running without a problem. And because I can run sync thing on Android, I got my entire knowledge base, my personal knowledge management system synced over in no time. I got the tool chain for my website up and running thanks to Android multitasking and a fast Emacs setup. Working on new web pages is a really pleasant experience. Compared to the Raspberry Pi that I use with my iPad Pro, I found that most things in Termux are around three times faster. So Emacs starts three times faster, my website builds three times faster and so on. That's a really important performance improvement. The big issue with coding on the S8 though is the keyboard. Coding is inherently a typing heavy activity and the keyboard is so bad, it makes coding a chore rather than a pleasure. I actually spent a few hours using Termux with my Logitech G915 and it was a significantly nicer experience. I think I might have to abandon the book cover and get something like the Logitech MX Keys Mini to be really successful with this as a portable setup. To summarize, I really enjoyed my Android experience and it's not over. I'm still using the S8 most days, still using Termux, still watching media on it. But if I travel with one device, then my device of choice is still the iPad Pro. I can more easily work around the limitations of the iPad Pro than I can the limitations of the S8. No Linux on the iPad is a limitation to be sure, but I can work around that with the Raspberry Pi or with the server back home that I can access remotely. I can't work around the lack of a good graphics suite on Android and that combined with the constant paper cuts of poor quality software and a horrible keyboard experience leave me still preferring the iPad Pro. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe and maybe hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.